and it seemed like the perfect way to start this first video for GT World Challenge Nürburgring and a sunrise on the Friday morning of the event. Uh, there's three very early starts coming up today, uh, this weekend, a bit of a strange timetable, we're on track at 8.30 every single morning uh, over the next three days. Um, and yeah, it's the fourth round of the GT World Challenge Championship, uh, we're coming back after the Spa event and um, we're on the Nürburgring GP circuit, so um, not on Nodge Life uh, or anything like that, and actually it's a combination of the Nürburgring GP circuit, I've never driven before. Uh, I've driven obviously the, VL, the, the short VLN layout, uh, I've driven the 24 hour layout, also driven the GP circuit with the um, with no Mercedes arena at the old time Grand Prix a long time ago, but never the full Grand Prix circuit uh, all in one go. So it's actually ticking off a new circuit for me, even though I've been to the Nürburgring many, many times. A couple of changes this, week, this weekend. Um, Sheldon van der Linde and Marco Whitman, my normal teammates, are out, out down in Spielberg, the Red Bull ring, for their D, uh, DTM championship. So we have now an all British lineup, which is quite cool, of uh, Nick Yelley. I'm driving with him again, uh, who I drove with in the Intercontinental GT Challenge Championship last year uh, and also won the Nürburgring uh, 24 hour qualifying race with. Uh, and then a fellow Brit as well, Jake Dennis, who uh, has just come off the back of finishing third in the uh, Formula E World Championship, which is also pretty cool. So again, in very safe hands in terms of uh, my teammates this weekend. So uh, yeah, we're looking for another strong result. M6 could be tricky around here, especially in Sector 1, but in Sector 2s and Sector 3 on the Grand Prix circuit, we should be able to really stretch the legs of the M6 and also yeah, sort of start to use the medium and high speed um, advantages to the car. Uh, it's still pretty early, so we're going to head down to breakfast now for the first test uh, and once we get to the circuit, in about one hour's time we are on circuit. <laughs> So Friday and Saturday were pretty tricky days so I didn't actually do much filming but we're skipping straight to Saturday evening where again I didn't really do much filming but I was able to pull some of the um, sim race footage. Um, again uh, I was doing the sim race for Volkenhorst and BMW, managed to qualify 7th this time which was okay um, considering carrying the ballast that I had from winning the Spa. Uh, esports race and also the just like in real life the circuit is not massively suited to the m6 uh, however i knew i could sort of outrace i think a lot of these guys had very good experience having done many starts here at the nurburgring i was ready to put that into practice uh, for the esports race before the race had even started i clashed with matt campbell as we didn't really see each other side by side going into t1 uh, and then i knew exactly where i wanted and needed to position myself to make the most amount of position so the m6 has got good straight line speed so i always managed to get off the line pretty well position my car well to then slot into fifth coming out of turn one and then again position myself correctly going into turn two to then take fourth behind uh, tomita newcomer dries Stantor, and series leader arthur rogier Yellow flags come out as ever people go wide at four, but we'll work it out from the order in a moment. As there, Galbiati is under attack from Matt Campbell. He thinks about the inside line, but to know. After that point, it was actually a pretty uneventful race, really. Uh, us four broke away uh, from the cars ahead until Dries Van Thor started to drop back suddenly. Rougier made a move into turn one, and then again, I was able to capitalize and make a move into turn two on the Audi to slot into P3 overall and then also P2 in the Pro Driver Cup. And then only a few corners later after Dries Van Tor was dropping back, he had this brake failure and I saw him in the mirror and how he missed me, I have no idea, but that was so, so close. But either way, that was then uh, third place pretty much settled uh, and I could again start to pull away uh, with Rougier. Uh, through the pit stops, nailed that, and then the second half of the race, nothing really happened. Uh, second position then, and for BMW's Falcon Horse Motorsport, it's David Pittard. <laughs> so 
So then a third trip in succession up to the podium and this time to have the trophy presented Steph by Rattel, none other position. than Stefan Rattel himself, the boss final, of all the GT World Challenge Championships and the SRO group. And the champion is Arthur's Arthur another Ruggier. consistent performance allowed him to wrap victory. up the teams and drivers and esports championship, so well done to him. The Pro Teams Championship here at the Nürburgring with a round to spare. Another day, another beautiful start to the GT World Challenge weekend. Uh, it's now race day and um, it's been a pretty tough weekend so far. Um, we had quite a bit of testing, which has been good. Um, a lot of it's been hampered, unfortunately, with like a little gearbox issue, which we've been struggling with the whole weekend. It eventually cures itself, but um, yeah, we're not really sure why. So it's a little bit tricky. We're a little bit worried going into race day anyway. So, um, Pace has not been too bad on new tyres, kind of story of the year, but uh, old tyres were struggling a little bit. Um, the car really doesn't suit this GP circuit on the Pirelli tyre, it's really, really tough to drive. Um, there's a lot of things we're trying to overcome, we've changed a lot of things, uh, but now it's race day and we are committed going straight into qualifying this morning. So, um, yep, three 15 minute sessions for qualifying and then the three hour race later on today. Uh, big. Timetable is a strange one here. It's a big split between um, yeah, the early mornings and then the late afternoons. It's changing the tra track temperature massively. Um, so it's really varying the, the, the car's handling and characteristics each time. So um, yeah, let's see who can make the best of these uh, conditions of the circuit and let's go score some points. <laughs> So, benefits of staying at the Linda Hotel at the Nürburgring is the track entrance is literally down there. You can hear the cars going into turn one. Uh, we've just finished qualifying and I've just come back for a shower and have a quick snooze as well because it's been such early starts the past couple of days. Qualifying went much better than I expected, I must admit. We ended up P13 on average overall. Uh, it was a pretty crazy session with a lot of blocking in the final chicane as people tried to get space to start laps, but then there were other people coming in on hot laps. And there was a certain GPX Porsche driven by a certain New Zealander that got right in my way. Well, Bamber accelerates down the hill. Big flash of the lights from the Valken Horst BMW behind of David Pittard, who knows this place like the back of his hand, David there in the black BMW, makes a move against El Bamba. By me, that was brave. Bamba's on an absolute best and a personal best. And David Pittard is crawling all over him, clearly feeling that he's being impeded here. And yet that Porsche is going at a fair old pace. But David Pittard, who himself has done an absolute best, is on a mission. Let's see who comes out the better. Bamba goes third. But what about David Pittard behind? He goes second within the session. So David Pittard is ahead on aggregate, the BMW ahead of the Porsche, might have gone even faster because there was no denying he wanted to get past. Well, uh, on my quick lap, driven by a certain New Zealander uh, that got right in my way, uh, on my quick lap, unfortunately. Still managed to string a decent uh, a second lap together um, to put us right in contention, right in the mix. Uh, the race could be interesting later on. It's still going to be a, it's still a beautiful day. It's still going to be very sunny, uh, and therefore the track temperature is going to be warm. Uh, but it will be cooling down by the time the race finishes. So hopefully if we can hold a strong position at the beginning of the race, uh, we should get a little bit stronger towards the end of the race. So to get the race underway now, it is blast off as the cars accelerate down towards turn one. The Lamborghini with good speed in the straight line. Callum Islet being blocked there on the run down towards the first corner by Norbert Siegler in the background. But it is going to be Mapelli who leads the way, but only just Marcello tries to stand his ground on the So again, I started, managed to make one position through the first sets of corners here going to the inside of the Assen who had a little wiggle through turn two and that gave me the inside for turn three where I could complete the move. Contact, a good effort by all 43. 
As always on lap one, I was feeling racy, so I tried to go to the outside of Robin Freens into turns five and six to try and complete the move around the outside. Didn't quite come off. And slotted back in behind. So I had another go at him later on in the lap as I dived to the inside of the Vido the place against the Audi back to the inside line dives Robin Fry then up the inside and he's done it good move they're going to be side by side off the corner now it's going to be about horsepower yeah we saw David Pittard make that move this morning trying to get a Brian car qualifying that was the 22 Porsche of that time so Pittard and Robin Fry is now going at it absolutely 100% nothing given nothing conceded but the Audi's got the inside line coming further over to the left to try and preclude the BMW going around the outside after that point it was a pretty uneventful stint really as I just held on to P12 on the road and uh, yeah bought the car in after my stint to hand over to Jake. Jake did an awesome job in the middle part of the race to bring the car just into the top 10 and it felt like the more the rubber was going down onto the circuits the more the car uh, our car was the balance was coming to us and we were getting faster. The Audi's been compromised, the Aston, and the Audi gets back because now Jake Dennis has compromised. No, it's not, and it's, well, what would you do if you're in the Audi or in the BMW? <laughs> Guys, one may, mega job. However, disaster struck with 40 minutes remaining as at our final pit stop, not all the fuel went into our a fuel rig. Uh, and as you can see, just in the background behind the Ferrari here, you'll just about see our M6 trundling into pit lane. Fortunately, there was a full course yellow, which allowed us to do a almost free pit stop because we didn't lose as much time as a green flag pit stop, but we still had to do an additional pit stop whilst running in P8. And I think we could have had a top prep 10 result had we not had to do the additional stop. Very frustrating. Holy shit! What happened here? Three hours of Nürburgring due to my challenge event is done. Uh, if you'd have told us we'd be running top, top 10, top 8 in the final hour of the three hour race, two days ago or one day ago, I wouldn't have believed you. We really struggled to get the car together. However, Max, the whole team, did such a good job to make the car competitive that we were running in the top 10 uh, come that final hour. However, we had an issue with the fuel rig, which meant we had to box again to top up the fuel to make the end of the race. Uh, and we just finished just outside the points in 12th. So, pretty disappointed about that. The, the luck from this year continues. The, all these random little things have not come together to make a result. So, big thanks again to the team. Great to share Nick Yellily and Jake Dennis for the weekend. We've got them again in Barcelona, so hopefully we can finish off the season on a high uh, and the BMW M6 on a high as well. Uh, so yeah, from GT World Challenge Nürburgring, uh, we go to NLS 7 next weekend, back on the big circuit, so I'm looking forward to that. Until then, let's go.